Hi guys, welcome to Glass Garden Art Flowers. My name is Elaine Olay, and this is my cohort in crime, Mary Stanley. Hello. Hello. And we are with Henrico Recreation and Parks. So we are going to bring to you today a really fun program that you can do at home with whatever you have at home and make some beautiful art for your garden or for your friend's garden. Right, Mary? Yes. Cool. Okay, so what you need to do this craft basically is some glassware. You can have plates like these, plates that have you know, color to them that are translucent. You can see we have a red and a blue. We also have a lovely yellow. Now a lot of these plates came from thrift stores. So you can go to your local thrift store and spend a quarter on little items like these, not very expensive at all. And if you're looking for this particular project, you want to look for plates that have interest, like this plate has a cool design in the back. And this is one of my favorites because it has a very cool design along the back. So when that's in the sunlight, it's going to glisten through there and look really awesome. So go through, it gives you an excuse to go shopping. Go find some fun plates, but you don't just need plates. You can also use fun things like little bowls, like this guy, like little candle holders, like this guy. Keep going the wrong way. And this is a cool candle votive dude. He's gorgeous red. And then since nobody smokes anymore, there are so many cool and fun ashtrays that you can use. These are both vintage. These are all vintage ashtrays, and they have a cool pattern to them. So now that we're staying healthy and not smoking, you can use these ashtrays for something else. What's fun is you can either clean out your cabinets, you can go shopping. A lot of the plates that we have here are vintage. Some of these are depression glass plates, and I have a bunch of depression glass at home that sits in the cabinet, and that's where it lives, and it never gets to see the light of day. So this is a really cool way to use some pieces and show them off all year long. So, what are the best places to get the glass? Just, you just thrift stores? Yard thrift stores, sales? thrift yeah, stores, yeah, yard yeah. sales, your mom's yeah. cabinet. No, I'm just kidding, don't do that. <laughs> but you can find them anywhere, really. Yard okay. sales are great too, Mary. Okay. We need to go yard sale. Yeah, we do. We I do. think we do. All right, so once you've decided what kind of glassware you want to get, you can either get clear translucent stuff or you can even use ceramic like these. That, this guy right here is one of my favorites because he's got that cool flow blue look. Now, he's not a like $500 plate like you'll find in an antique shop. He's a reproduction, so he's cool to use. But they are fun, too. Their, their beauty is face value. There's no sunlight going to come through those. But these guys, you'll get the light through, which looks really cool. But either way, they come out awesome. So what you need first is your glassware. And then I went on the hunt for a long time for the best kind of glue to use because the, obviously these live outside. They have to be able to withstand rain and a lot of caulks work. Sometimes they're not really strong. So I found a really good adhesive last year and I was using it, but now I can't find it anymore. So I'm not gonna tell you to use that one. Um, and it also didn't dry completely clear. I think Mary has a piece here that's got some of that. And I don't know if you can see the film. Well, yeah. It's kind of cloudy. I see it here. Elaine, we have a question from the audience. Okay, what's that? You mentioned glass and ceramic. Are there other materials that can be used? Or are there you, materials that should be avoided? Good question, Anna. Um, you can use, we've done this program with children, and obviously glass is not something that works great with kids, so you can use plastic plates, um, and you can color them with paints or markers so they have that same kind of fun effect. Um, and those work well. They work good for um, children. I wouldn't really recommend using paper because that would probably just not survive the first rainfall. So I would go with glass or ceramic or plastic. All those three would work. Right, Mayor? Yep. Thank you. Yep. All right. So on to the good stuff. This is the, the next best glue that I found. It's, it's a Loctite product. You can find it at your box stores. Um, it's very good, and if you read the directions, it'll tell you what it will glue and won't glue, and glass is like number two on here, so I said yes. So, and it goes on clear, and it dries clear, which is awesome. 
so you don't have to worry about how much you get on there if you, you know, it'll look beautiful and translucent and let your glass shine. So now this is a, an adhesive caulk, so you're gonna have to have a caulk gun. This one's kind of funky, because it's done some work. But this is your caulk gun. They cost like $3 at the box store, so you can get one of those. And then you have to cut the tip of the uh, nozzle so that the, the glue will flow. So you can use like a box cutter or something like that just to cut the tip off. You don't want to cut it off way high up here or you're going to have a bunch of glue gushing out and that's no good. So just cut the very tip off and then I always plug it back up when I'm not using it so it doesn't dry up. Because if it does clog and dry up, then it's hard to get it flowing again. All right, so you got your glassware, you got your glue. We're going to use these little alcohol wipes. You can use just a bottle of um, alcohol from home and a rag, but you want to clean really well the area that you're going to be adhering so there's no oils from your hands on the glass and it'll get a really good grip on it. Right, Mayor? Yep. That's why I like working with you, Mayor. You agree with everything <laughs> yep. I say. You're my pal. Okay. Do we need gloves too? You are going to wear gloves okay. for sure because okay. while it's okay if you get a little on your hands, you want to wash your hands right away, but it's not great to get on your skin, so I would wear gloves while you're working, and then when you're done, you can throw them away. Um, something else to remember when you're looking at your glass, a lot of bowls have like that little lip there. Uh, most plates will have a lip there. So when you're adhering and you're putting the glue on, you want to pay attention to what the glue is going to be adhering. You don't want to put a glob right in the middle of that because it won't do any good. Okay, so we'll, Mary will demonstrate in a minute how that works. Right, Mary? Yep. That my girl. <laughs> okay, the only other thing you're going to need, sorry, is a back. Because once you finish your glass flower, you want to be able to put it on. Hey, can I have that one over there, Mary? This one? Yeah, yeah. You're going to want to put it on a stake so that you can stick it in the ground in your yard. Mm -hmm. So this That's one true. is rebar. You can buy that at your box store as well. It's a metal rebar. They also sell a plastic tomato steak rebar that you can use. It's not quite as sturdy. You are so good, Mayor. Like this one, not quite as sturdy, but either one works. Okay? So you'll need some of that, and it can be as tall or as short as you want, depending on how high or low you want your flower. And I will tell you, once you do one of these, you're going to want to do about 1,600 more because they look really cool together, grouped. And then everybody that comes to your house is going to say, I want one. So you're going to have to make more, right, Mayor? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's true. It is. All right. So I got to talk louder. So the bottles. We don't drink while we do this. That's not why we have a wine bottle. Right, Mayor? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> the bottle is what you're going to put on the back. And that's what's going to go on the stake that's going to hold it up in the yard. Want to hold that bottle, Mayor? So here is an example of a plate that I just glued the bottle on the back, like that. And this has the lip, so I put a gob of adhesive on that lip, a gob of adhesive on that lip, and a big blip of it in the middle. That is a technological term for that. And then I just set this empty uh, hard cider bottle on top, and then I let it sit for a solid 24 hours. Let, let the, the uh, adhesive cure. If you pull it up too soon, it's not going to stick. So I did that a couple days ago. So he's ready for action. You can use soda bottles. You can use wine bottles. I'm doing this monster one. Ooh, that's a good one. With a bowl. That's real good. That's real good. You can, it's hard to see, but it's a, it's a huge salad bowl actually. And then I adhered the bottle on the back of it. Now I used a different caulk on this one. I used a uh, bathroom tile caulk that is also waterproof but it goes on white, so it takes a while to dry. It'll dry clear, but right now it's still trying to dry. So I'm just leaving him alone for now. But when he's done, I'm gonna take this dude and put him in here like that. It's hard to see. Roll it up a little bit. Make it happen. Make it happen, Mary. Look at that. There it is. There it go. So just a couple, si that's beautiful. It is so nice. Just a couple simple pieces together, and when you get that out in the sunlight, Thank you, Mary. So do you, is there like a weight that you try and stay under? Will this glue hold? Well, how many bottles, how many pieces of glass can you stack on top? I've never tested a glass flower past like three pieces. 
I imagine you could maybe add one more, but you don't want to get it so heavy that it's going to topple over out in your garden. Okay. And also, if you start stacking too many, you lose the effect of the pretty glass. It just becomes like a jumble. Like when you paint with too many colors at one time and it turns brown, that kind of happens. So, we have adhesive, we have glass, we have backs. I can take that. Thank you, ma'am. Yep. And we have gloves, and we have alcohol wipes. So I think we might Elaine? be ready to start. Yes, Miss Anna. I have a question for you. Uh-huh. Does it matter what color the bottle is on the back? Is it better to have a clear bottle? Or I see you have like a blue one. Um, will that make a difference in the light shining through your piece? It'll make a little difference in the center. It might be a little, yeah, it's, it's hard to tell from here. It might be a little shadowed, but it's not really going to affect the look from the front. Obviously, from the back, you'll be able to see that gorgeous blue, which I like. Um, it's really your preference, whatever look you like. And that's when we'll show you, when Mary starts, how you kind of figure out what you want to go with what and what looks good with what. It's a process of, you know, what kind of look you want and where it's going to live in your garden. And it's all individual preference. So my friend Mary is going to start... All right, I'm just laying out some paper. Perfect. I'm, I don't want to ruin the tablecloth that we have. So if you have newspaper at home mm -hmm. or whatever, you can just use whatever you have at home. That way, if the glue gets on your table, it won't ruin it. Okay, so I'll start. We have to first, I'm going to clean the glass, right? Is that what I'm doing? Yep. Okay, good. Mary sifted through like 50 plates earlier today. I did. Okay, earlier so this, today. Is what I, uh, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I chose. And obviously it's not glued yet, but oh my gosh, it's going to be so pretty. Look so pretty. Ooh, so nice. Okay. So you have the texture of this and the frosting of this, and then there's a silver rim on that little glass. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? And it's square, and this is like a little chandelier, like you'd find in a bathroom or something. Hmm? But it looks so pretty. And I'm going to do that. And then we have this. Little silver rim of... There we go. Beautiful. So that's what we're going to work on. But I, we got to clean them first. So here we go. How, how well do I have to clean this, Elaine? Well, just wipe it down pretty good. You just want to remove the oils from your Elaine, hands. Elaine, I have a question. What's that, Anna? What are you using to clean the glass? Well, the, ooh. Can you use, Phew. Can you use soap and water or something I would else? use alcohol, either rubbing alcohol or like these little alcohol pads that you get in your first aid kits. They work really well. I have another one for you right there, my dear. So Mary's just getting the parts of the glass that are going to be adhered together. Because we want to make sure we're going to get as good of a grip as we can between the two pieces. And the oils in your hands can really affect how things will adhere and how things will work together. Well done, Mary. About that. All right. I think I'm ready. Okay. Yeah, it's dirty. All right. Gloves. So I'm going to put gloves on because I don't want glue everywhere. All right. Now the glue. Oh, boy. Ready? I think we're ready. Okay. Cap's going to come off. Is it already pressed? Mm-hmm. All right, so I'm gonna see, I'm actually gonna put the glue on here, okay? Mm -hmm. And then, should be ready to roll. I say it should be ready to roll. <laughs> okay. Or not. It's not happy. All right, let me take this off. This is the fun and excitement of crafting live. Now it's going to just come out of there. Okay. Wow. So not as tidy. All right, here we go. Here we go. Can you turn it for me? Yes, ma'am. It's like putting toothpaste on your toothbrush. Well, that's a lot. That's okay. That's okay. Because it dries clear. It's not going to hurt anybody's feelings. Look at that. Well done. Oh, yeah. Now. All right, so I'm going to try and put it right in the middle. And I'm going to press. Give it a little squish. Nice. Excellent. Ta-da. Okay. 
And now I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it on the rim of this. Okay. And then we'll just place it down there. Miss Elena, I have a question from the audience. audience. Yes, ma'am. How hard do you press down? Mary, how hard do you press down? You, when I press, you can see the glue start to spread and mm -hmm. it'll grab onto it. You'll be able to tell, you'll feel it. Did, and it's not wobbly. Yep. So you just make it a good press down. You'll see the glue just spread out. So look, yeah. you can tell I'm kind of moving it and it's not going anywhere. Oh, it's gonna be so pretty. It's gonna be gorgeous. All right. Well, so how done. long do we let it sit? So you're gonna set that aside inside. I would leave it for at least 24 hours. If you can be patient and wait a little longer, that would do be good it. too. Okay. Because you want to give it the, the best opportunity to really cure and adhere well. If you're like That's me, pretty. you're going to want to flip that booger over and put the back on. But we're going to be patient okay. and we're going to wait. Okay. So we'll show you quickly with the back. I'll put it back on him. Just quickly. And All right, you tell me how over. much I got to squish here. So you just want a line? Let's see. This guy doesn't really have a huge lip, so you can probably just do a big bead right down the middle. All right, here we go. Get it. Nice. Is that good? Yep. Everybody see that? All right. Ready? Ready, Freddie. All right. And you place it just where you like the look of it. It's not a precise. Do you have to tape it? You can. With this stuff, you really just need to set it and leave it. It's not going to go anywhere. Look at that. Put it somewhere that it's it won't stuck. get bumped, won't get knocked around. OK. And again, let that sit for a good 24 hours as well. So I always create the flower first because it's very hard to work, unless you have a buddy, it's very hard to work on something like this by yourself because it's going to flip around. So. If I had Mary here with me to do it, then I would say, hey, Mary, hold that for mm -hmm. me, would you? And then I would start stacking. And you can also prop it with things underneath if you're working by yourself. But I always make my flower first, and then once it's completely ready, flip it over, put the back on. Does that make sense? Yes. That makes sense. And then let it dry, dry, dry before you put it outside. Again, you're going to get your rebar and just shove it in the ground, and then you just place your bottle top right over top of the rebar, and boom. And it's where do you where do you buy rebar? Box store. Box store. Okay. Yep. Any of the box stores are going to have it. Um, and then I never leave mine out over the winter, and it's probably overkill. But I'm afraid it will it will freeze. Water might get into it and freeze and crack. So I always bring mine in in the winter time, and then put them right back outside in the spring. And then what's great about these is they don't require any water. You don't have to weed them. And they're gorgeous. They Low just maintenance. Fill your garden with yeah. really beautiful color. Elaine, I have another question. What's that? You mentioned rebar. Yes. Is there another something that could be used besides that, like tomato sticks, tomato plant sticks, or something like that? You can use um, like steel rods, anything that's thick enough and that's not going to bend with the weight. You can use anything like that. You can use the tomato steaks like Mary showed you earlier. It's a lot lighter. Looks like rebar, but it's, it's plastic. It's got metal on the inside. So that's firm enough to hold it to. So something like that works too. Um, and then we have a couple that we have finished. So I'm gonna show you some cheating that I did. Sometimes I cheat when I do projects. I know. So Genius. this one I did, there you are. This one I did with a piece of my two pieces of my depression glass right here. Just took them out of the cabinet. And then this was a thrift store find. And then instead of using a bottle, I just happened to have a, a flag holder, the flag holder hardware that has a place where you can put a piece of rebar right there. So I just glued that on the back and then I can just stick that on rebar in the garden and it works too. I cheated. That's brilliant. Brilliant. It I is. cheated. It really cheated. is. You want All this right. One? Yes. This is a little cute little guy that Mary made. And if this you is an old one. Do a bunch of these together. It looks adorable. This one's got a bug on it. No, it doesn't. But Mary used a shot glass on that one, yeah. which works really well too for a little a little guy. But some of those grouped together, so cute. Mm -hmm. And this is also a piece of depression glass. 
So, and this is a chandelier piece. So you can use anything, whatever catches your eye that you think would look cool. And all put together, they're just awesome. Do you want to make one more? Do you want to? Yes. You want to do one out of ceramic? Yes, let's do that. You didn't, did you? Well, I want to use this thing right here, look. But that's okay. Because <laughs> that one's not fully dry yet, and we don't want to mess it up we by going it. too fast. So we'll wait on this I'll piece. let you do that one later, Mary. Yeah. I know you want okay. to. Okay. So as far as ceramic wear, we have a few different objects here. I don't know... I don't know what you had in your mind. I'm game for whatever. What you want to do. What do you want to do? I don't know. Let's just play. When does this, what does this look like on there with this? Does that look funky? That's kind of cute. That is kind of cute. Blues and yellows together. You can't Love go em. wrong with that. Want to do that one? Yeah, let's do We're it. We're going to do that one. See how hard this is? I think I'll do that. Okay. Unless you want to do this. Uh-oh. <laughs> Here's smaller ones. Oh. Ceramic, do you have any more ceramic? No. Okay. Yeah, that's too much. That's kind of, that's too yeah. Much. I like the blue and yellow. All right. Let's clean. Mm -hmm. I'll help you. This one still has the sticker on it from the price tag from the thrift store. So get all that goop off of there. Oh, I love this one already. Okay. Good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I'm Here hand, you go. hand drying this. <laughs> okay. You got it. We ready? Ready. We'll get everything right, out I'm of your do the way. Same thing. Can you turn it for me? I would love to. Ready? Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you sing while you do this, it's even more fun. Of course. Mm -hmm. There. Boom. Whoopsie. There. Good. All right. You said it. You do this one. Me? Yeah, you. <gasps> okay. Set it in the middle. See that goop on there? Yummy. All right. Now I got to try to spin all the plates. And. Boop. Is that pretty centered? Yep. All right. Looks good. All right. This is way fun to do with a group of your friends. Everything's always more fun with a group of your friends. You can kind of plan a date where everybody brings over their stuff and you just kind of create flowers together. If you're part of a, a flower club or a garden club, cool activity to do. All right. Me again? Yeah. Okay, which way? Which way? Which way? Mm. Boop. Oh, oh, no. Look. Isn't that pretty? That's so pretty. Not pretty centered, but that's okay because perfect is overrated. It's pretty daggone close. All right. So then this one would look awesome with a blue bottle for the background, for the, for the holder. Just saying. Either way, it's going to be pretty in your garden. I think so, too. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys for joining us today, and I hope that you will try this at home because it's way cool. And if you do, send us some pictures. Send them to our website, HenricoRecanParks.com. We'd love to see what you create. Happy creating. Thanks, Mayor. Bye. Stay tuned for more fun programs.